Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Dr. Gerek. We are studying labor economics and this is compensating wage differentials chapter 5. Let's get started with part 1. In part 1, we are going to focus on the definition and introduction of the uh, concept of compensating wage differentials. Let's get started. So I wanted to share this very uh, awesome quote by Muhammad Ali. He's a um, legendary boxing champion right he says it's just a job grass grows birds fly waves pound the sand and i beat people up so it sounds really like weird him to say that but he sees his occupation it's just a job this is something i do okay so let's get started so personally i would find it really um a job with negative aspects boxing because it can be dangerous but again uh, every job has uh, certain aspects that job has very um high risk therefore it pays off more right think about it all right so far we talked about uh perfectly competitive labor markets you have employment here you have wages here equilibrium happens when demand and supply curves intersect right so you have supply of labor demand of labor these these are topics we covered i covered this in chapter one unit uh, chapter two unit one this is covered in chapter three unit uh, two and now we are on unit three we are covering this chapter five okay so supply and demand curves intersect at only one point and equilibrium wage rate is determined and equilibrium employment rate is determined so I'm going to clean this up. So I wanted to just talk about some extreme cases, some other cases. Let's put it that way. If wages are too high, WH, go hit the first curve. This is your labor demand, quantity of labor demanded. And this is your quantity of labor supplied. So these many people are looking for jobs. This is origin. And only these many jobs are available. So you have this distance is going to be excess labor supply labor supply or it's also called unemployment or the other case let's talk about the other case where the wages are way too low this is also called worker surplus okay so if wages are way too low lower than the equilibrium wl Go hit the first curve go horizontally go hit the first curve this is going to be labor quantity of labor supplied oops and now we're gonna go hit the second curve this is the quantity of labor demanded so these many jobs are available from here to here however we have these many workers willing to and able to work at this very low wages so you have excess excess labor demand excess demand for labor okay so you will have some companies going without workers okay w star is determined equilibrium employment rate equilibrium wage rate are uh, rates are determined no unemployment in this case right which case well when we when we are at the equilibrium point i'm trying to erase everything i'm cleaning it up so we're going back to the base case all right and then there would be a single type of work with identical jobs and identical workers in the economy okay so real life labor markets is not characterized by a single wage so in real life right we don't have just one single wage rate workers differ and jobs differ too so in real life you're not all getting paid the same Different workers are paid differently. A professor is paid differently than a tech CEO. A, a janitor is paid differently than a car mechanic. All these different things. Jobs are not identical in real world. Workers' preferences are not identical. So also we have jobs that are not only wages. They are the whole packages okay so jobs are packages with benefits and risks some people prefer non-mentor aspects of jobs so for instance i 
am allergic to lots of things in nature, so I prefer to be working indoors. But some people enjoy working outside, right? They wouldn't be working in an office job. So working, uh, so this is what I was saying. Some people like working outside. Some prefer more social environments, etc. For instance, working for Google versus working for the Texas state government as a programmer. Okay, so these are two different animals. Google has, you know, supposed to have really fun uh, work environment versus Texas state government. It's a state government job, so it's going to be a little less, uh, less fun. Okay. All right, so compensating wage differentials. Let's talk about this. Adam Smith proposed that the idea of job characteristics influence labor market equilibrium. So we expect that jobs with unpleasant aspects maybe pay more, hopefully. So compensating wage differentials arise to compensate workers for non-wage characteristics of the jobs. So I want you to know this. Workers have different preferences. Firms offer different working conditions. Okay. And how can we incorporate the idea that we have heterogeneous, different workers, heterogeneous uh, companies and workers pick a job package that makes their, them as happy as possible, maximizes their utility. So as a result, jobs with distasteful aspects must pay more. Okay, so we expect the jobs with distasteful aspects must pay more. So this is called the compensating wage differentials. So in part two, we are going to work on general model of compensating wage differentials. We are going to talk about jobs with risky aspects. And we're going to talk about hedonic wage function and theory. I'll see you then.